What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Manny Morquino. Welcome to my channel. A little bit of time since we've seen each other, but uh, let's skip all the formalities. Let's skip all the catching up and let's just get right back to it, okay? I'm down in Miami for my last few months of medical school right before graduating. Graduation is in June, match day is just under a month. And uh, basically I figure out the result, the culmination of this last four years of study, this last four years of work and figure out where we're going in a very, very short period of time. Um, what I wanna talk about today, if you guys are familiar, if you guys are familiar with the USMLE and the news that's been going on, you guys know that USMLE step one has recently become a pass fail. If you follow any medical school influencers, whether residents or students or whatever it may be, I'm sure you've been hit with a little bit of a barrage of talking heads um, on the topic. And you know, a lot of people are giving their opinions, a lot of people speculating on what's gonna become of USMLE step one and residency applications. And I just wanna say that I'm here to throw my opinion into the hat as well. I'm here to throw my thoughts in on the game as well, I know. Um, first and foremost, Whatever you think of this decision to make step one pass fail, whether you think it's good, whether you think it's bad, it's fantastic, it's horrendous. I think we can all agree that some of these memes that have come out as a result of it are absolutely hilarious. I'm gonna throw some of these memes up right now, right here in the video, so you guys can take a look at some of them. I'm gonna throw a bunch of them at the end of this video as well, because I honestly think that they are the best thing that's happened out of this entire, this entire setup. Uh, these memes are fantastic. Now, inevitably, some people are gonna have opinions on step one being pass fail. A um, little bit of background information for those of you that don't know, step one is an eight hour examination. Basically, it's taken after, typically taken after your first, after your second year of medical school. And the idea is that you're tested on all the basic sciences that you learned from year one and year two. So pathology, um, microbiology, uh, biochemistry, maybe some abnormal psychology, some epidemiology and stats. And it's meant to be systems based. It's meant to be, it's meant to be a little bit reflective of, you know, what we learn in, in at the very least in the first two years and hopefully what's going to become useful in our practice. But a lot of people have come to terms with the fact that it's not exactly representative of the actual clinical practice. So traditionally the exam was scored on a three point scale or three digit scale. Uh, basically from zero to 300. Um, over the last few years, for example, 2018, the passing score was a 194, and I believe the average score to pass, or the average score um, was a 230 in 2018. So the passing score is a 194, and the mean score is a 230. And that's on the three-point system. Now, recently, February 12th, the USMLE, the co-sponsors, the FSMB, FMSB, I forgot the name of the acronym, they decided, and they've been talking for about a year long now, they, uh, about making the exam pass fail. And so they eventually decided that they're going to take it from a three digit score to a pass fail basis in efforts to. This was in response to students and some faculty and some members of the medical community saying that. Um, there was too much stress, too much weight being placed on step one, and because of that, people were being stressed out, and, and rightfully so. I mean, step one is a very important exam, and when you think about it, for those of you that don't know, it, it tends to weigh very, very heavily on people's applications for residency, to the point that there are people who are applying for fellowships, and fellowship program directors are even pulling back their step one scores. Um, so, to a degree, something had to be done. That being said, whether or not this was the right move, time will tell. Time will tell if this was the right move making step one and pass fail. What I want to try and do is discuss the pros and cons, basically give my own opinion based on what I think, especially as an IMG, what I think, and what I think is going to be um, important moving forward. So let's start with the pros. Let's start with the pros of switching over to pass fail for step one. Um, first and foremost, moving from three digit scoring to pass fail is supposed to, this is the pro, it's supposed to remove some of the stress on medical students as they're preparing for step one. I know a lot of people, myself included, step one was one of the most difficult times of our lives. Um, it was very, very difficult because of the fact that because of the fact that we know the step one, we knew the step one was so heavy and was weighted so much, we knew that it carried so much weight for our, our careers moving forward. A lot of it, a lot of us spent an inordinate amount of time, probably an unhealthy amount of time, studying and you know separating ourselves from most of our family, most of our friends, in order to study and get this exam done. 
So the the idea behind making a pass fail now is to kind of make that feel, you know, be less necessary. To not have people feel like they have to be um, so anal and so dialed in and so stressed and anxious and worried about this exam. That's the hope of making a pass fail. Whether or not that's actually going to be the case, whether or not that's actually going to be the result, again, time will tell. We'll see as time moves on. I personally don't believe, I'll get in front of it right now, I personally don't believe that that is going to have the, um, that this change is going to have the effect that they were hoping for. Another pro for making step one pass fail is that it inevitably is going to put more weight on step two CK and step two CS. Now these two exams are also very long exams for those of you who don't know. Um, step two CK is actually an hour longer than step, uh, than step one. Step two CK is a nine hour exam, which um, tests students on their knowledge gained in year three. So step one tests students on the knowledge gained in year one and two. Step three, uh, step two, excuse me, Step 2 CK is based on your knowledge from year three, so your clinical years of training. Um, and the idea is that Step 2 CK is that you kind of learn how to deal with patients very, very basically, very generally, learn how to deal with patients, learn the general um, administration of certain medications, the general concepts of treating certain diseases, and it's meant to be more clinical than Step 1. And then Step 2 CS is the most clinical of the first of these three exams, because Step 2 CS, you go in, you can do, um, you meet Sympats, simulated patients, um, you take histories, you do physical exams, you um, give them your diagnoses, your understanding of the diseases, and basically you're simulating being an actual doctor, an actual physician. That's what step two CS is. So the idea is that step two CK and CS will weigh more, um, and that should be a pro. Now, I don't necessarily agree with change to uh, pass fail. Um, some of the cons, I think, I think there are probably more cons than pros in my mind. Um, and as an IMG, I think the biggest con, the biggest thing that jumps out to me is that as an IMG, a lot of us really, really needed step one as a means to differentiate ourselves from North American students. Um, as an IMG, odds are you're working at a little bit of a deficit because you're not already in the American system. You're not already on the ground from day one with some of these other students who, you know, if you go to school in the States, most medical schools in the States are directly affiliated with universities and hospitals. So, you know, these guys from the American schools will go from the lecture in first year to clinical session on the first day. IMGs tend to be in the books or in the lecture halls in whatever country they are and then by the time second year is done then they come to the US and then they come to you know stateside and they have a chance to work with clinical directors and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So those networks, those relationships have not been built the same way for IMGs as they have been with um, American students and because of that things like step one are a really 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 important way for us as IMGs to kind of get our foot in the door and say hey look we're also as competent as the students that are in your home schools and your home programs so without step one as an option for that I think it's I think that's a con for IMGs and for um, also for DOs and, and basically anybody who's coming from like a non-traditional route for medicine that takes me to my next con IMGs DOs and also lesser profile schools are probably at a disadvantage with this because of the fact that those relationships that were so important now that step one means you know almost nothing now the step one is going to weigh less I, I I feel like it's going to stratify certain programs stratify certain schools so you know it's going to be kind of aggravating the haves versus the have the nots that type of dynamic so if you go to a high profile school if you go to a prestigious school that's going to be worth more than what your scores are it's going to be worth more than the work that you did that's going to be worth more than the effort that you put in because now you went to a high you know prestigious school you did the work early on you got into a prestigious school or i assume you did the work early on you got into a prestigious school and now that prestige is going to carry you through your career or may carry you through your career as opposed to the effort that was placed into you know actually working in medical school so that's that's something that i think is concerning and i think is a con another con that i think could come of this is that because step two is going to be inevitably I, i've said inevitably like eight times tonight because step two is going to be more important moving forward i see a lot more students 
dodging off clinical responsibilities and clinical duties in order to get home and study for step two, in order to get home and study for step two CK and to like get into the books in that sense. So the way people were concerned that students were dodging lectures and dodging medical, you know, dodging medical school lectures on the campus and dodging the actual exams for, or not the exams, the actual assignments, for example, for their school in order to do board prep. I think it's going to be much of the same now. I think people are going to see more students trying to get out of clinical studies, get out of clinical experiences, which is very important to be to a would-be doctor. Um, trying to get out of those clinical encounters and scenarios in order to study for Step 2 CK. And I don't think that's a good thing coming out of this. Now, another big thing that I think um, is possibly the possibly the biggest con out of this, and this is not an idea that I came up with on my own, this is an idea that I've seen floated around, that I've seen from some educators, and essentially what happens is, if you make step one pass-fail, they're, first and foremost, they made step one pass-fail, they have not abolished step one. So that means that step one is still worth something, even though it's a pass-fail. In order for it to be worth something, the passing, in my mind, the cutoff for a passing grade has to be increased. I don't think that, Right now, the passing grade for step one is a 194. And like I said earlier, the mean was a 230 in 2018. Um, I don't think that a 194 is going to cut it anymore as the equivalent for the pass. I think the passing cutoff has to go up by five to 10 points. That's me speculating. That's me giving my own, you know, my own take on what's likely to happen. I, it may not be as much as 10 points. It may be more than 10 points. I've had people who tell me, told me that, yo, 10 points sounds ridiculous can't be more than 10 points. If it's up to 15 points, it's going to be a revolt. It could very well be 15 points. It could very well. So what that means to me is that, yes, it's going to be a pass-fail, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an easier exam. It just means that you now have one or it's a binary result. You pass or you fail. And passing may not actually be easier. So that means the people who thought that they were going to, you know, have less stress because of the fact that it's a pass-fail exam, they don't have to study as hard, they, you might see a higher fail rate because of that. The exam itself might become more difficult. I, like I said, I'm speculating. I don't know with any sort of clarity if that's going to be the case. I've heard from educators. I've heard from some fairly notable people who've written a lot of material for board prep that um, that, that is something they anticipate will happen. So that's... We're just gonna see how that all plays out. That being said, the point is being that people who are floating around a passing grade or who would be floating around a passing grade need to be really, really careful moving forward because this means that you know you may not be able to get away with just a passing grade. All that being said, I, I know that the people who got 270s and 260s on step one are probably you know losing their minds over the last 10 days or so because you know they put in so much work. Everybody put in work. Everyone put in work. I understand that. But the people who got 270s are like, well, my 270 means nothing now, you know. Um, but my advice to anybody who's coming into medical school and who's looking to, especially IMGs, who's looking to enter medicine and take these exams, you meet, you need to pass step one. You absolutely need to pass step one. Now that it's a pass fail, the default is a pass. So if you fail it, you have a lot more explaining to do than somebody who just barely passed it a few years ago. That's the thing that you need to keep in mind. Now you need to do, you need to pass step one and you need to do well on step two CK and CS just because now we have less leeway. Um, work on getting your letters of recommendation really, really early. Work on getting right from the start, whatever connections you can have, whatever connections you can make, whatever um, clinical experiences that you're able to finesse really early on, get those because those are going to separate you from somebody who doesn't have those. Um, your letters of recommendation, your MSPE, uh, shelf exams are going to become more important. Research is going to become more important. And it's just the nature of the game. Research may not be super clinical, it may not be useful clinically, but research is going to become more important. Find a way to get yourself published on more papers, whether that's first author, second author, third author, whatever, just get on some research. Finally, people argue that some of the step prep companies, the board exam prep companies are gonna lose money. Ah, I don't see that being the case, man. I don't see that being the case. Uh, these board exam companies are, some of the representatives have been in these meetings for 
year, two years. They, they're they the ones who know that these things are changing. So companies like Online MedEd are already sitting very, very pretty. All of their energy, almost all of their energy is devoted to step two prep in the first place. So now it's just a matter of churning out some new videos and updating videos for them. Um, USMLE RX is another one. They have step two prep. Sketchy just jumped on some step two prep, some shelf prep, because all these companies now know that they're going to take a hit. Their pockets are going to take a hit if uh, they don't adapt to this changing nature of um, step two prep. So now that the game is changing, students are going to adapt, companies are going to adapt, medical school administrators are going to adapt. And um, that's the name of the game moving forward. The name of the game is not pass fail. It's not three digit anything. The name of the game is just adapting. So what I'll do is um, I, because I personally have no skin in this game at all, I really didn't read as in depth as maybe I could have. I was on the USMLE site. I checked out their frequently asked questions. I watched a few videos from some other people who I felt are more insightful. Um, I will link all those for you guys in case you're curious about anything else. I will link the actual, the decision process that the USMLE went through and their meetings and everything. I'll link that for you guys at the bottom. Um, I will post a link to some other videos for some very insightful residents, students, doctors who I think also will give you some kind of, um, yeah, what an insight as to what you should keep in mind moving forward. Um, ultimately, I, th I do think that making step one a pass fail, I do think that it's a band aid solution. I don't think it solves the problems entirely i think that until we get to the meat of the issue which is the culture the program directors have created in which one single exam can dictate a student's entire future until we deal with that the stress that students are worried about will never be dealt inevitably it's just going to kick the can i've said inevitably it's just going to kick the can down the road a little bit longer step two and other things are going to weigh uh, a disproportionate amount but for now the silver lining is that the co-sponsors of, the, uh, the co -sponsors of the USMLE and the people who are in charge are in fact listening to students a little bit. That is one silver lining that I can take from this. I don't think that this is an ideal solution. I don't think this is going to be a final solution, but I think that this means that the people who have the powers of B are at least alert to a degree what, you know, as to what students are going through. Thanks guys for checking me out. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Um, I am going to chop this up, edit it, and uh, talk to you guys shortly, okay? Uh, make sure you stick around, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check me on Instagram, check me on Twitter, etc., etc. I will link all the videos that I mentioned, all the other ideas I mentioned, and you guys can check them out and um, send them, tell them Manny sent you, all right? Until then, work hard, dream big, be good to each other. And um, much love.